why is there something instead of nothing? Well, I really can't answer that. I mean, that's, that's a physics question. But as far as did something come from nothing? No, I, I don't believe that, uh, Dr. Dayton. That is actually what the Bible says. And you said it earlier that God created everything from nothing. Okay, so it's you that believes that something came from nothing, not myself. I believe that everything has either been here. When we look up at the sky, we see the stars, and we see the clouds. That's evidence that stars and clouds exist. That's not evidence that God created them. We know that they exist. There's no disputing that. But where they came from, we can't say. Now, the more we learn, the more, the better our answers get of uh, uh, the Big Bang and the future of our universe and the past of our universe. Uh, as far as uh, how the rest of it goes, yeah, uh, I don't understand why that somebody could believe that God is eternal without evidence, but we see the universe. Is it that much of a stretch to think that the universe is eternal? Whether it's dying and will reform, whether we uh, belong to part of a multiverse, or, or whatever the, the final answer comes to, we know that that stuff exists. We have no real evidence, no way to test God. Now, some of the uh, stuff in the New Testament makes claims that are actually testable claims. Uh, where Jesus says that if any two believers pray, you can move a mountain into the sea, I believe. Well, that's a testable theory. We could take a group of 20 Christians and put them in a room and ask them to pray to regrow an amputated foot from a, an innocent child. And it's not going to happen. So when it comes to making the testable claims of the Bible, it fails on every level. And again, the Bible is not meant to be a historical book. Are there historical facts in there? Sure, some of the places do exist. Some of the people that are in there do exist, and we have evidence for that. But I've been to Los Angeles, and I've noticed some of the scenery from Terminator movies. It does not help the credibility of the Terminator. flat, 
and in the center of the universe. You know that's not the case. Investigate, please. Be critical of your beliefs. If they are true, they'll stand up to this critical belief and examination. Uh, the truth will always welcome free inquiry, will always welcome examination and critical ideas. It will only help survive, uh, help to strengthen what we consider to be the truth. All right, thank you. Have a good night.
give an example of, a, say, a 3D movie, you have an audience of half of them with the lenses to see a clear picture. The atheist who does not have the lens of faith sees a blurred picture. And they both argue whether it's blurred or clear. They never agree because they clearly see it differently. What, how does the atheist who has less information try to prove that the Christian who has more or the clear lens to understand, see what's out there is wrong? Well, it's the Christian who is making the claim, and it's an incredible claim. As an atheist, I'm only disputing that claim. So when you make the claim, it's in your court to offer the evidence. Now, your analogy with the glasses and having a filter, that, that comes with that presupposition. Yes, everybody here started as an atheist. When you're born, you have no concept of God. We're all atheists. We, we are taught religion as children. If you had been born in another country, in, in India, chances are you wouldn't grow up to be a Christian, you'd be Hindu. If you had grown up in Saudi Arabia, you'd be Muslim. So it's not that it's a natural course of events. It's more of a filter of society, of your community, your parents and your upbringing. Uh, so yeah, it, it's more of the, the presupposition filter. Is it, does that answer your question? How can I be more specific than that?